Ghost Rider 6. There's the Eagle 3 1. Uh, we are just south of the Reno Timber fight area, and uh, we have Last Stand Hill in sight over. That is Ghost Rider 6. Taking the mission out. Uh, break, break, break. Uh, this is Eagle 3 1. We have three unidentified markers in sight. Request permission to investigate. Uh, 3 1, this is 6. Roger, go ahead and get some boots on the ground. Out. My intent was to do a uh, video on the Rosebud, the second episode, and I ordered a uh, four foot by three foot map of the battlefield. Um, I was going to try something different and um, to accompany the various PowerPoint slides and Google Earth. But as you can see, deliveries in the state of uh, Indiana or uh, had a bit of a standstill. So we're going to do something a little different this time, and uh, we're going to get some boots on the ground in Reno's Valley fight. The first stop is along the road just south of where Reno's timber fight took place to see some aerial shots. From here, you can see back to Reno Creek, the area where Reno's troopers and the Arikara scouts crossed the Little Bighorn, and the terrain where companies A, G, and M formed up and charged. Much to my surprise, I stumbled into two markers right next to the road, one of an unknown trooper whose remains were found by the Weibert family in 1925 and reburied here in 1926. They discovered most of the skeletal remains except for the skull. They also reported two bullet holes, one in the hip and another in the shoulder. The other marker is for Roman nose. Also from this position, we will now look to the west. You can see my position the now defunct Reno Battlefield Museum, which roughly intersects the area along Interstate 90 by the initial skirmish line. You can see the area of the fighting in the timber. And while shooting this, the landowner came out to inquire about my intentions. We talked about the area and the fighting for roughly 15 minutes, and he gave me permission to access his property and explore it further. Additionally, I found this photo from a National Park Service publication showing some of the landowner's artifact discoveries. It really gives one the sense of how the battle flowed from west to east, from the skirmish line all the way to the crossing. The next stop was right here where I was able to cross the cattle fence and move toward the area of the timber fight. And we're going to go into the woods and actually see the Reno defense site. Skirmish line extended out this way. And then they moved into the timber defense here. And actually you can't see it, but we'll walk up to it through this uh, herd of Angus. And uh, take a look at uh, Dorman's marker, the marker to Isaiah Dorman. Okay, I'm going to go in here and, uh, and have at it. So as I walked through this herd of cattle, just kind of did this a bunch of times as a kid. There's no Angus bull out here. If there was an Angus bull, I don't think, um, well, I would probably be carrying my replica 1873 carbine. And there's always that one you got to watch out for that's, behind, that's sneaking behind you. Like this one. That one I don't trust. I'm keeping a close eye on her. Isaiah Dorman. It says here, interpreter, here's the marker where he was fell, he fell, and was severely mutilated. He had uh, a pin driven through his testicles, and his penis cut off and shoved in his mouth. That's just for starters. The reason he was, he was mutilated so badly is because he was married to a Sioux woman. Um, and so they knew him. And he begged for mercy. He goes, please don't kill me, I'm a dead man already. And some, and, uh, some squaw came up and uh, shot him in the head. We'll press on into the woods, there's some more markers here. So this is looking into the woods where the defense was. And as you can see, uh, there's there's a clearing here. So this must be the clearing that they talk about. And then there's a there's a deep cut ravine that runs along the other side of those uh, cottonwoods there. Uh, there is a marker down here where we'll go to. And just outside these woods here is the marker to Charlie Reynolds. content be sure to like and subscribe 
so indeed this is this is the open area this is where reno would have ordered the retreat or charge depending on which side of the fence you're on and that is true because if this marker is correct this is where bloody knife was shot in the head and had his brains splattered over major reno So this is looking back to the north here and I just walked out you could see a series of cottonwoods this is the area of the timber fight and you can see Charlie Reynolds marker so you get a sense of the retreat in the direction it came out and here is the marker for Lieutenant McIntosh who was surrounded pulled off his horse and killed right here. Before you guys uh, get any ideas about going to gallivanting across that uh, that ground where the timber fight was, I would uh, caution you because be prepared for a welcoming committee when you return back to your vehicle. So it made it kind of interesting. Is I had one guy come up. He goes and he was joking around. You know, what the hell are you doing here and so on and so forth and Jason I don't know no Jason blah 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 and, he, and then he had a big smile on his face so he said hey you know we were on the same side back then in 1876 and another guy came up was like what are you doing here so had to go through tell the story again be advised okay having said that Reno Creek Road and this is Reno Creek Road Reno Creek, so here is where Custer and Reno divi wings divided. And going back to the north here, you can see the bluffs, and here's the little Bighorn River, and where they splashed across. So we are you know, several miles south of where the Reno, the quote unquote, the Reno Valley fight took place. One final thing let's look at the Reno crossing site area. Now, you can see what I presume to be. Lieutenant Benjamin Hodgson's marker. If anyone has a photo of that marker, please share it on here if possible. I have seen a uh, photo of uh, his marker further up the slope, but that would uh, not be correct, and it seems it has been moved to this location. Unfortunately, the, uh, the rising sun is perfectly obscuring the monument to the reno Benteen defense, so let me just fly a bit to the north. Ah, and uh, there it is. If I would fly any closer, I would be in violation of federal aviation regulations. So it is time to return to base. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as we will have many more videos on the Sioux War, including further analysis of this fight. Charlie Mike, continue mission. Out.